morning. Good morning. I, I thought at the very beginning when I started playing that there were very few people here, but you filled out nicely. So welcome to worship. It is Christ the King Sunday. We celebrate the reign of Christ. It's also the last Sunday of the church year. So that means that next week we'll be starting Advent. We'll have the beautiful midnight sky blue uh, pyramids and the, um, the Advent wreath. And it should be very, very lovely. But for this week, we celebrate Christ's kingship and sovereignty. Um, a, a word of a sorrowful news, uh, Irma Flowers has entered into eternal life. She was, if we think of um, Helen Contis, Arane Roth's mother, who is sort of an associate member and friend of the parish. Um, she lives in Rochester, New York. Um, she's 107. That, uh, Irma was 104. So she was our second eldest member of the congregation, um, had a good long life. There are no plans for a funeral yet, but as soon as there are, I will let you know um, in our communications. Jerry Butts turns 90 this week, and we've asked for a card shower. Um, the information is in your bulletin, so please check into that. We'd like to thank everyone who had anything to do with the tricky tray, which includes the Setzers, and Tracy Carmen and Pat Arn Hartzell, and Kathy, and I, I, I always hesitate to say anyone's name because then I will leave someone out. So if I have omitted you from that list of people who helped, um, please know that we're very, very grateful. It was a grand success. Uh, the drawing was very exciting, and Amy and I won two prizes. So I have no complaints about that. Um, and I had lunch at Chick-fil-A earlier this week for my door prize, which was very, very nice. So if you'll note um, the announcement about the wish list wonderland that the Chris Ed Committee is doing in place of Breakfast with Santa, um, we ask for um, canned goods or, or goods for the food bank. It turns out that they don't really need canned goods right now. What they need are paper products. So that includes um, paper towels, TP, plates, tissues. So if you're able to bring that um, to the Wishlist Wonderland, that would be really, really good. That's what they can use. The poinsettia order deadline is next Sunday. I have lots of forms out in the, uh, the narthex, so please take one if you'd like to order a poinsettia. Um, Alan Williams wanted me to remind you that the college care packages deadline is also next Sunday, so if you have a kid, um, who is in college, it doesn't matter if they're at home or if they're away on campus, um, he would like to send them a care package with some goodies to help prepare for exams. I have several addresses already, but we, you know, Alan's always happy to add more to the list, so um, we'd love to do that. I want to wish you all a very happy Thanksgiving. Um, Amy and I were talking last week on the way home from church how, you know, COVID is crazy, and this, this last two years have been really difficult, but we have felt um, drawn so much closer to so many of you who are attending weekly, and when we review the comments online, we are so touched, and I think this congregation still remains very, very connected, and I know that the both of us are very, very thankful for that. So we wish you all a very happy Thanksgiving. The office will be closed on Thursday. I'm going to be making a turkey. So um, wish my family luck, and with that, I'm going to invite the handbells forward for a festive offering for Christ the King Sunday.
we stand for confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God who forgives all our sin, whose mercy endures forever. God of all mercy and consolation, come to the help of your people, turning us from our sin to live for you alone. Give us the power of your Holy Spirit that we may confess our sin, receive your forgiveness, and grow into the fullness of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Gracious God, have mercy on us. We confess that we have turned from you and given ourselves into the power of sin. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. In your compassion, forgive us our sins, known and unknown, things we have done and things we have failed to do. Turn us again to you and uphold us by your spirit so that we may live and serve you in newness of life. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. God, who makes all things new, forgives your sin for Jesus' sake and remembers them no more. Lift up your heads and your hearts. Yours is the kingdom of God. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. Almighty and ever living God, you anointed your beloved Son to be priest and sovereign forever. Grant that all people of the earth, now divided by the power of sin, may be united by the glorious and gentle rule of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The congregation may be seated. from Daniel. As I watched, thrones were set in place, and an ancient one took his throne. His clothing was as white as snow, and the hair of his head like pure wool. His throne was fiery flames, and its wheels were burning fire. A stream of fire issued and flowed out from his presence. A thousand thousands served him, and 10,000 times 10,000 stood attending him. The court sat in judgment and the books were opened. As I watched in the night visions, I saw one like a human being coming with the clouds of heaven. And he came to the ancient one and was presented before him. To him was given dominion and glory and kingship that all peoples, nations, and languages should serve him. His dominion is an everlasting dominion that shall not pass away, and his kingship is one that shall never be destroyed. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us read responsively the 93rd Psalm. The Lord is king, robed in majesty. The Lord is robed in majesty and armed with strength. The Lord has made the world so sure that it cannot be moved. Ever since the world began, your throne has been established. You are from everlasting. The waters have lifted up, O Lord. The waters have lifted up their voice. The waters have lifted, lifted up their pounding waves. Mightier than the sound of many waters, mightier than the breakers of the sea, mightier is the Lord who dwells on high. 
Your testimonies are very sure, and holiness befits your house, O Lord, forever and forevermore. A reading from the Revelation of John. Grace to you and peace from him who is and who was and who is to come, and from the seven spirits who are before this throne, and from Jesus Christ, the faithful witness, the firstborn of the dead, and the ruler of the kings of the earth. To him who loves us and freed us from our sins by his blood and made us to be a kingdom, priests serving his God and Father, to him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. Look, he is coming with the clouds, and every eye will see him, even those who pierced him. And on his account all the tribes of the earth will wail. So it is to be. Amen. I am the Alpha and the Omega, says the Lord God, who is and who was and who is to come, the Almighty. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the 18th chapter. Pilate entered the headquarters again, summoned Jesus and asked him, are you the king of the Jews? Jesus answered, do you ask this on your own or did others tell you about me? Pilate replied, I am not a Jew, am I? Your own nation and the chief priests have handed you over to me. What have you done? Jesus answered, my kingdom is not from this world. If my kingdom were from this world, my followers would be fighting to keep me from being handed over to the Jews. But as it is, my kingdom is not from here. Pilate asked him, so you are a king? Jesus answered, you say that I am a king. For this I was born, and for this I came into the world to testify to the truth. Everyone who belongs to the truth listens to my voice. The Gospel of the Lord. According to St. Luke's account, when Jesus was born, the powerful people up in the palace missed all the excitement. The choir of angels, the heavenly messengers from God came to none of them, not to the important people. Rather, the heavens split open and songs filled the air. An angelic army appeared to poor shepherds out in the fields at night. Now that's strange. Even stranger was what the angels said. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace among those whom he favors. Now, the song of the angels is almost a direct quotation from the decrees of Caesar Augustus, who was, as we know, one of the, more, the world's most effective dictators. When some imperial decree was made by Caesar's occupation forces in the Near East, this was how it usually began. Glory to the most august Caesar, otherwise known as God in the highest, and peace on earth to those with whom the God Augustus is well pleased. The implication was that there would be hell to pay for those with whom the god Augustus was not well pleased. Do you see it? Luke has put Augustus's imperialist words on the lips of the angels. When Jesus was born in Bethlehem, there was a divine decree. There is a new king on the throne. Jesus Christ is king. Therefore, Augustus is not king nor is anybody else 
except Jesus Christ. Well, today's gospel reading is a long way from that glad beginning, that Gloria in excelsis, that grand angelic power play. Today's text from John 18 has that one heavenly, once heavenly heralded king standing bedraggled, beaten, whipped, and bleeding before almighty Pontius Pilate, protector and pawn of Caesar's empire. Pilate looks at this forlorn-looking rabbi and asks with a sneer, so, are you the king of the Jews? Are you the king of this captive people that I hold under my thumb? And though Pilate was holding all the, cor the, all the cards and can with a wave of his hand unleash a, unleash a little shock and awe on these poor Palestinians, although Caesar still sits secure on the throne, something suggests a subtle shift. Sovereignty is seeping away from Caesar's throne. The head that wears the crown is becoming increasingly uneasy. Today is Christ the King Sunday, the last Sunday of, after Pentecost, and one of the most politically charged days in our church year. It's entirely accidental that Christ the King Sunday comes just a few weeks after Election Day, but it's a highly significant accident. The question before us this morning is, who sits on the throne in your heart? Will you bow to the politics of Pilate or to the cross of Christ? That's the critical question. Every time the church gathers, even when it's not Christ the King Sunday, wherever the church gathers, even if it's not in one of the battleground states like Pennsylvania, we can't escape politics. Just when we try to make the Christian faith all personal, all just me and Jesus, we find, our we find ourselves praying a prayer that ends with the words, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And then somebody asks the impolite question about who really sits on the throne. Once again, the church slips past the merely spiritual into the pushy political. Are you the king? Pilate asked. Now, Pilate had the power to ask that question because he was backed by the biggest army occupying the Near East until now. Pilate was so far powerful, yet we suspect that he was about to be exposed as really impotent. And though, that, and though on that day many average citizens, when polled, screamed in answer, we have no king but Caesar, we suspect that Caesar's kingdom is in jeopardy. Jesus doesn't come right out and answer directly, yes, I'm a king. Your reign is in peril. Your empire is on the skids. No, Jesus doesn't answer the question about his kingship because it's our job to ask that question. It's our task, our calling, I would say, as followers of the Lamb, as citizens of the kingdom of God, as people who on this day are prepared to sing, crown him with many crowns. We're people who know one little thing that many of our fellow citizens do not. We know who truly sits on the throne in our hearts and in our lives and in our world. When we say the Apostles' Creed in our Sunday worship, one of the few times that the once powerful Pontius Pilate comes up in our lexicon, in our vocabulary, we link Pilate to the strange bir virgin birth of Jesus. We profess, I believe in Jesus Christ, his only son, our Lord, who was born of the Virgin Mary, who suffered 
under Pontius Pilate. I wonder if that connection between Mary and Pilate is more than coincidental. Born of the Virgin, suffered under Pontius Pilate. A month from today, preachers will stand up in the pulpit and proclaim that Jesus was born in Jerusalem, far from the centers of power, son of an unwed mother. There are layers of scandal here that Christmas carols and Sunday school programs have conveniently covered over. The preposterous claim was that Jesus' mother got pregnant without the help of any man. Jesus' father was God. Now, many modern people have trouble believing in the virginal conception of Jesus, and I have to confess that I share that consternation. We know that that's not how babies come into our world. Was Jesus really born of a virgin and had no human father? It's hard for modern scientific people like us to swallow such a preposterous claim. And yet, what if it's really true? I wonder if the real problem with this arcane Christian doctrine is that if it's true, there might be a king who could claim by virtue of divine paternity to command our allegiance above all other authorities and power. Here's my point. It's a whole lot easier to believe that Jesus was born of a virgin than it is to believe that Jesus sits on the throne. And for me, it's harder to believe still that if Christ is king, I have to live that way. But that's what it really means to be a Christian. On Christ the King and on every other day of the year, Christ and no other sits on the throne in our hearts, in our lives, in our congregation, in the world. Amen. May it be so. In the words of the Apostles' Creed, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. 
I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Eternal God, you hold firm amid the changes of this world. Hear us now as we pray for the church, the world, and everyone in need. God, you sent your son Jesus to, te to testify to the truth. We pray for preachers, missionaries, evangelists, and teachers who carry your forgiveness and love to the world. We pray for our call committee and pastoral candidate that they might receive your wisdom in their discernment. Fill the words of all who teach the gospel and action and offer actions with compassion and kindness so that your truth will shine. God, in your mercy. God, you sent your son Jesus to liberate all of creation. We pray for all living things longing for the freedom to flourish from ancient trees and wild grasses to endangered animal, animals and rare insects. Give human beings compassionate hearts to care for them. God, in your mercy. God, you sent your son Jesus to lead us into the way of peace. Direct the members of international alliances in choosing a nonviolent path toward the future. Give them the humility and wisdom that make just decisions to benefit all. God, in your mercy. God, you sent your son Jesus to make us into your own people, set free to serve you. We pray for people who serve the well-being of others, especially ministries in our community, in particular participants in the 2021 Northern Lehigh Mission District ingathering. Renew them in their work. God, in your mercy. God, you sent your son Jesus to rule in all times and at all places. We pray for the friends of our congregation who are unable to join our worship in person and for all who are sick and suffering, especially Mary Ann, Ed, Bernice, Clyde, Barbara, Gladys, Dorothy, Bob, Jerry, Ginny, and Pastor Jennifer. Join their prayers with ours and unite them with us in the body of Christ. God, in your mercy. We offer our own intercessions, either aloud or in the silence of our hearts. God, in your mercy, God, you sent your son Jesus to be our beginning and our ending. We give thanks for those whose lives have given us a glimpse of Jesus' reign of justice and peace. Empower us to join their witness. God, in your mercy, God, our hope and strength, we entrust to you all for whom we pray. Remain with us always through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always and also with you. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. 
Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God. For you anointed your only begotten Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, with the oil of gladness, as eternal priest and king of all creation, so that by offering himself on the altar of the cross as a spotless sacrifice to bring us peace, he might accomplish the mysteries of human redemption, and, may, and making all created things subject to his rule, he might present to the immensity of your majesty an eternal and universal kingdom, a kingdom of holiness and grace, a kingdom of justice, love, and peace. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join in their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, Lord God, our Lord and God, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy, mighty, and merciful Lord, heaven and earth are full of your glory. In great love you sent to us Jesus, your Son, who reached out to heal the sick and suffering, who preached good news to the poor, and who on the cross opened his arms to all. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat, this is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering, therefore, his death, resurrection, and ascension, we await his coming in glory. Pour out upon us the spirit of your love, O Lord, and unite the wills of all who share this heavenly food, the body and blood of Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be all honor and glory now and forever. Amen. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, we pray as Jesus taught us, our Father. Hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from the evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. All who hunger and thirst come, the table is ready. As you take the bread, remember that this is the body of Christ, the bread of heaven. As you take the cup, remember that this is the blood of Christ, the cup of heaven. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in God's grace. Let us pray. 
Blessed Jesus, at this table you have been for us both host and meal. Now send us forth to extend our tables and to share your gifts until that day when all feast together at your heavenly banquet. God the Father who has given to us his Son the name above every name, strengthen us to proclaim Christ as Lord and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among us and remain with us always. Amen. Go in peace, set your hope on Christ our King. <laughs>